everybody. Pray you're doing well today. It is Wednesday, June 8th. And good to be with you once again as we continue to answer some questions that you guys have sent in, uh, both in relation to the series on Colossians we're doing and just some general biblical questions that you have. Um, got a great question this week once again, and just great to see how people are really honing in on some really good questions. So keep them coming. Great question this week related to Colossians chapter 1, specifically verse 15 and something it says there. Now, it's interesting because in the New Living Translation, which is what we typically speak from on a Sunday, it's written a little different. Um, but let me tell you what's happening here and explain the difference in relation to the question. So in Colossians chapter 1, uh, as Paul is writing to the church of Colossae, he says this when he gets to verse 15, talking about Jesus. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. Now, that's what it says in Colossians 1.15 in the New Living Translation. But even there, it has a note down at the bottom that says this is an alternative translation. And it's translated this way in a number of different English translations. So, so let's go back. Colossians 1.15. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is firstborn over all creation. Now, some translations say firstborn over all creation, others firstborn of all creation. So now let me connect that to the, the question that was sent in. What does it mean by firstborn of all creation in Colossians 1.15? Jesus is God, and so has always been. And, and, and that sentence at the end is simply, yes, we say God has always been. God was not created. He's just always been yesterday, today, forever, and Jesus is God. So what does it mean to call Jesus the firstborn? If we look at the Amplified translation, it, it says this, Colossians 1.15, is the firstborn, and then it says this in, in brackets, the preeminent one, the sovereign and the originator, in bracket, of all creation. So what it does is relate firstborn to the idea of preeminence, sovereign. He's, we talked about God's sovereignty last week. He, he's the one who rules and is in charge. And also the originator. All things came from him. So if we take that just a little bit further and we look at the actual Greek word being used that's being translated firstborn that word is prototokos and and here's what it means it can mean priority in time or supremacy in rank so if you think back to the New Living Translation when we first started speaking talking about Christ being supreme over all creation it, it said that versus firstborn over all creation. But that idea of supremacy and rank is part of that word prototokos that can be translated firstborn uh, in, in the original Greek, can be translated in English firstborn. So here, when you look at behind the scenes a little bit, there are many that say that perhaps there's a sense of both this priority in time and this supremacy in rank in speaking about Jesus in Colossians 1.15. Jesus was as God before all created things. In addition to that, Jesus was as God, supreme. He's the creator of all things. So it's not necessarily talking about him being physically born. It's talking about him being supreme and literally being before everything else. You know, it's interesting because if you go a little bit further in Colossians chapter 1 and and you may have already thought of this or noticed this. That was verse 15 that we were looking at. If you go a little bit further in verse 18, it says this. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. There it is again in the New Living Translation. It's translated supreme over. But literally, once again, it's the word prototokos. And other translations say Christ is also head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, the firstborn of all who rise from the dead. 
so he is first in everything. So here's once again that sense of before all, the originator, and, and supreme over all, versus uh, that idea of literally being born. So if we look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, if I would go there as well, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, it says this. Um, actually, let me do this. Let me read down to verse 6 from verse 1 in Hebrews chapter 1. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to the son as an inheritance. And through the son, he created the universe. The son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. This shows that the Son is far greater than the angels, just as the name God gave him is far greater than their names. For God never said to any angel what he said to Jesus, You are my Son, today I have become your Father. God also said, I will be his Father, and he will be my Son. And when he brought his supreme Son into the world, God said, Let all of God's angels worship him. Notice, as we go down to verse 6, there's this idea of equality with God and God the Father and Jesus. Creating everything, reflecting him. There, there's this kind of one-to-one. -one. And yet here once again, when we get to verse 6, is this idea. And when he brought his firstborn son into the world, yet in the New Living Translation, once again, it translates it as his supreme son. The one with the preeminence one who existed before anything else. So I hope you can see that there are other places that comes up later on in Colossians 1.18, here in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, where, where is this idea of supremacy or being before all is what that word really means. It, actually, in 1.15, if we, we went a verse or two after that, in Colossians 1.15, sorry about that. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme or firstborn over all creation. Then, then let's just go a little bit more. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. So if we stop right there. There, once again, just like at the beginning of Hebrews chapter 1, is that idea of that, that equality in being with God, everything being created through him and for him, which puts him before all things, and him having the supremacy. So you can just see that once again. As a matter of fact, when it talks about, in Colossians 1.15, being the visible image of the invisible God, the, the Greek word for that is the icon. E-I-K-O-N, and he's the likeness of God, as if it was a reflection of God in the mirror. He's an, a manifestation of God. He's God fully revealed. So once again, we, we see that equality, which points to that supremacy and being before all things, even though that, that word firstborn can trip us up a little bit in terms of thinking, oh, wait a minute, was he part of the creation? No, he was the creator, supreme, and before all things. The final thing I'll let you know is this. Two things. In, in some of the writings of the ancient rabbis, what, what I found was this. They would refer to Yahweh, God who says he's the I am, always been, always will be, as the firstborn of the world. They literally, in their writings, they wouldn't see Jesus as being the Messiah, but they refer to God himself as the firstborn of the world. And there you can see that, that same sense, which doesn't mean he was the created. He's the creator, but he's before everything and supreme in comparison to everything. And finally, in, in Psalm 89, the psalmist is writing about David and something also a messianic prophecy, something that applies to somebody on earth but that also ultimately points to Jesus. And if I read beginning in verse 24, it says this, My faithfulness and unfailing love will be with him, speaking first of David, 
and by my authority he will grow in power. I will extend his rule over the sea, his dominion over the rivers, and he will call out to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn son, the mightiest king on the earth. I will love him and be kind to him forever. My covenant with him will never end. So there, once again, you see that idea of it pointing ultimately to the Messiah. It's a covenant that will never end. Um, mightiest king, whoever be on the earth. And, and yet, notice it says, I will make him my firstborn son. And so once again, there's that idea, which you can clearly see in the context there, not literally the first one born of everybody, but the one who will really have supremacy, the one who will be seen as being before all. So, you know, a, a great question, because that idea of Jesus being firstborn comes up in a number of places in Scripture. So really something important to answer and to speak about. So thank you for asking that question. And um, like I said, keep them coming. Uh, it's really good to be able to interact with you with some of these questions. And whether it has to do with the current sermon series or not, this one did, but also it is a much bigger question beyond that. Uh, whether it does or not, just please continue to send them in. We'll keep trying to answer them. And again, if you have any follow-up after we answer a question, you've got a yeah, but, or you know something you take off of that question, please feel free answering them to the best of my knowledge at this time, um, but always open to more conversation and seeing God's spirit work through all of us as we continue to interact together. All right, everybody, have a, a great Wednesday afternoon and evening, and hopefully see you in a few days. God bless. Bye-bye.